Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make elements in your activities scale to the proper screen size. First, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Go up to app and then manifest, and then you'll see this. And above the application, but below the manifest declaration, you're going to need to add the support screens. And you can include whatever size screens you want. Normally, all you have is normal screens, but by default, you don't have to add this. Your app will still run without this. It's just better recognized on Google Play if you add this. So there's four main sizes. Normal would be like uh, just a standard phone like the Nexus 4, but a small screen would be pretty much most phones below that size. Large screens are like tablets, like seven inch tablets, like a Nexus 7. And then extra large screens are like 10 inch tablets, like the Nexus 10. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So we have main activity or activity main rather. And then we also have activity main landscape. And as you can see here, in landscape mode, we have extra buttons. That's because we have used the extra space that we have to make room for new stuff. So in our basic size, we just have two because that's all we can really fit. If we added a third column, it's gonna get really tight and small. But when we turn the screen, we have this extended space here. So let's say we're on an extra large tablet. Well, we have room for a lot more buttons. And even in landscape on an extra large tablet, we have all this room. We can have five rows or five columns, how rather, of buttons, like so. But if we go to a really small screen, like found on the Nexus One, we only have room for about one rows of buttons. We can maybe squeeze two, but it just feels better to do one. On the landscape version of small, we can just add two. Basically, in each one of these files here, you create a your own different layout for each screen size. It's, it can be tedious, but it's well worth it because if you have a giant screen like on a Nexus 10 and you only use rooms for two columns of buttons, it's going to look really funny. It might stretch too far or just a terrible use of space. So you're probably asking, how do we add more of these? Well, there's a couple ways you can do this. First of all, the most easy way you can do is go up here and then you can just create another layout or you can go up to app or even file, somehow right click or even file new and go over to Android resource file. Click on that and you'll find this. Now here's the key part. All your activities need, even though they're different screen sizes or orientations, they all have to have the same name. So in this case, it's activity main.xml. Specifying it's a values folder or value type of file. It will be in our main, not debug or release, and then values. Well, what kind of values are we going to use? Well, we have all these to select from. In this one, we are going to be using the size qualifier. And you'll see here we have values small. We know that it's a small screen. We could also change that to values large, and we could use it for a large folder. Or we could do extra large, or even just a normal size. Also, let's say we want a small values folder, which means that the screen size will be small, we can also add a landscape mode by just typing dash land. You always have to go in order of values, then the screen size, and then landscape or portrait. You can't do values, portrait, and then the size. So we would do large, and then land, or large, and then unnecessarily port, just to make it more specific and then from there we can just click ok i'm not going to do that because i already have one so let's just dive into each one of these files and check out to see how i have two columns here but i only have one column here well basically in our hierarchy we can see that i've created a linear linear layout which covers the entire screen added a text view at the top just to tell you what's going on and then i added a linear layout and that contains a scroll view so all these buttons will scroll and then inside that scroll view, I have another linear layout, which contains everything in there. And then inside of that one, I also have another one that could have been a duplicate. I don't know. It's probably not necessary. But in contained in that one, I also have a, another linear layout, which contains all our buttons and text. But in a normal size screen, it's a little bit different. Same. We have the linear layout, which covers the entire screen. And then the text view inside of that. And then also another linear layout, which contains all our buttons and columns which also has a scroll view, which means you can scroll through. 
and then we have a linear layout which contains the buttons and then inside all that we have two linear layouts which are each column so I could even label this column one and column two that would make things a lot more easy to read but we can just leave it like that and then each side of one each of these we have all the buttons and the text views and then to get really complicated we can move all the way to the extra large and we'll find we have the same all-encompassing linear layout with the text view and then here we go we got our scroll view and our linear layout and then all the different columns I will have all this code available on github so you guys can check it out even download it yourself and run it just to get a better idea of how it works if you would like thanks for watching hopefully you learned a lot in this video and have a wonderful day